you don't have to be always in the market sometimes the best position is in cash in my opinion right and when it comes to crypto my argument is you know a dollar in crypto is better than a dollar in the bank okay, okay? because i can that period you know okay. then the other analogy i like to use is you know you're going to get on an airplane you're going to go on a spontaneous trip to australia and you go up to the currency booth and you take your dollars and Say you're going to go to an exotic destination, Australia or otherwise, you're going to say, oh, here are my dollars. Can you give me the Australian dollar so I can go do what I have to do? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, oh, that's perfectly normal. But do you understand what makes the exchange rate move? The Australian dollar? Do you know what the Australian payroll number was last month? I no. do not. No. So people are like, well, I can't do crypto because I don't understand it. Are you like, well, you did the Australian dollar. You don't understand that. Right. It's a, it's a special form. It's a special form of money. Now, crypto was designed for the type of environment that we have now. So the other way, thing I like to tell people is, you know, crypto can be money. Mm -hmm. Crypto can also be like a tech stock. So you know how in stocks, you know, you have to take your dollars, buy your QQQ. And then one day when you sell it, you sell your QQQ, you get your dollars in two days and then you go shopping. Okay. Crypto is all those things all at once. Ethereum is technology. You can use it to buy art. You can pay people with it. But ETH is Ethereum is also a technology. That crypto right now, let's just say Bitcoin. So there's 21 trillion Bitcoin or 20, billion? 21 million. 21 million. million. Okay. That, in today's dollars, that doesn't sound like a lot of, that doesn't sound like a big enough number to me. So, but then it halves. Tell me about the halving. Halving. Okay, so so the having is something where the people who maintain the Bitcoin network throughout the world, okay, like no one person controls Bitcoin. So the way Bitcoin works is, you know, people called miners who actually run this computer network mm -hmm. that Bitcoin runs on, you know, they get a certain reward for running the network in the form of Bitcoin. Okay, okay. well, every four years. The way Bitcoin was programmed is that every four years, the amount of Bitcoin that they get for what they do drops in half, you know, enhancing the scarcity value of Bitcoin, right? There are more millionaires in the United States than Bitcoin that exists. That was like the big stat in 2018. Okay. Right. So, okay. you know, Bitcoin is what I would call a scarce digital asset. Now, you would have to have a degree in computer science to fully understand it, but the computation that goes into making a Bitcoin, like that's what people get paid for because it doesn't just it doesn't just appear. You can't make it on Canva. You know what I'm saying? So the computation required to calculate or create a Bitcoin or move Bitcoin is rigorous, and that's why these guys get paid for all that computing power. So that's a computer science nerd argument for Bitcoin. Okay. The Can non one mine Bitcoin? No. 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 I mean, 10 years, 15 years ago, maybe. But Bitcoin okay. is, is like on gigantic institutional computer farms, many in Texas now. Right. Like China pushed it out. You know, Bitcoin mining is institutional only. Okay.